So this is the software that I use. It's called uh, Stellarium and it's really good. It's a free planetarium software. And uh, this is what I sometimes use to uh, identify which targets I want to uh, image. So the target that I'm imaging at the moment, um, I've actually uh, started imaging in the last week of August and I've got four nights on it so far and it's my biggest uh, photography project uh, so far out of any uh, photography uh, project. Um, I've got 13 hours on it and I'm hoping to get around 20 hours um, so that I can really pull out the uh, detail uh, in the nebulosity and improve the signal to noise ratio of the image. So we can zoom in and we can see what it looks like as well. So there's actually, that's the whole nebulosity of the Veil Nebula. You've got the Western Veil um, and over here, and you've also got the uh, Witch's Broom uh, Nebula just there. And you can see why it's called the Witch's Broom because it, it looks like a Witch's Broom. But the part of the nebula that I'm interested in and that I'm in imaging is this here, which is the Eastern Veil Nebula. Uh, it looks really cool. It, it, it looks to me, um, it reminds me of uh, the alien in the alien films. Um, I don't know why, uh, just the, the shape of it, I suppose. Um, when it's in this orientation, uh, you know, the sort of wisps of uh, clouds and gases, it just looks really cool. Right, so this is the mount uh, that I have. Um, it's the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, and it's a really nice mount. Um, it's a sort of entry level for astrophotography uh, for a go-to system. And the go-to system means that I've got this hand controller here, a SynScan hand controller, and that enables me to tap in an object uh, in a database of about 10,000 deep sky objects uh, so that the mount can slew to the desired target. The telescope that I use is a William Optics Z73 430mm apochromatic refractor um, which is a really nice uh, wide field scope. So the camera that I use is my regular daytime DSLR which is the Canon ATD and it's not modified um, so it's just a stock DSLR but it's really good it's one of Canon's latest cameras and uh, the sensor on it is really nice and it's also ISO invariant as well um, but I'll uh, go into more detail about that in another video So I've just aligned the mount with uh, Polaris and I've done the alignment as well on two stars, Vega and CAF. Uh, Vega's quite high up and uh, CAF's easy to find as well. So um, yeah, we just need to uh, punch in the uh, details for the uh, target, which is NGC 6992, the Eastern Vale Nebula. And uh, we can do that on the uh, SynScan hand controller. So I'm using this uh, program called Astrophotography Tool and that's on my laptop. My laptop's connected to my camera so I can see an image on the screen of the uh, 
nebula, the Eastern Veil. And I'm just at the moment centering it um, to try and get it in the middle of the frame where the best image quality is. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So you can just see the nebula here. Um, but I think I'm going to just shift it to the left a little bit more. So I've got it a bit more centered. So I'm just going to press uh, the hand controller to move across. And the way that I do that is I click on live view. And I can just make out a star here and a star here. So I use those as a reference. You probably can't see them on the screen. But if I move them ever so slightly, just about there. And then we'll take another test shot. Right, so I've got the uh, target framed. Um, so I just need to go on to PHD2 now. Uh, PHD2 guiding, this software is called. So if I just open this up. Um, have a look at how it works and what it does. So what we do is click on connect here and then connect all. Okay, and then we begin looping. So we can see some stars now uh, through the guide scope camera and I'm going to cl uh, click on tools and then auto select star. Uh, I find this works well. And it shows me the signal to noise ratio of the star. So 34 uh, is quite a good value. And then when we've done that, we just click on begin guiding. And the mount goes through this sort of auto calibration process. And the star moves, you can see the star moving uh, on the right there um, and the mount's just checking for the uh, consistency, uh, the quality of the star and the quality of the tracking so that when it's finished um, that star stays locked in position and if it moves ever so slightly uh, a pulse is sent to the mount to correct for that movement Therefore, the mount is uh, completely accurate all the time and it means that you can go from one minute, two minute exposures to five minutes, ten minutes, uh, twenty minutes or even half an hour, you know, and, and depending on how good your guiding is set up, you can go even for even longer than that. So the idea of auto guiding is that you can take longer images um, and the reason for that is that we can then capture more detail uh, in the nebulosity because you've got to remember that these nebulas uh, in deep space which we can't see with the naked eye they are sometimes millions and millions of light years away um, so the light took all of that time to reach our own eyes well, you know, those photons traveling through space took millions and millions of years. So they're really faint. Uh, and that's why if we can take a longer image, we can capture more photons in a single image and uh, therefore more detail and uh, structure, you know, in the nebulosity and those, uh, those gases. Okay, so we've uh, set the uh, guiding and that's running. And uh, this is what it looks like. So you can see that graph uh, there shows the uh, right ascension and declination and how good a quality it is. So yeah, it's okay. Uh, I think that we can uh, work with that. So 180 second images, ISO 200, a pause of 10 seconds between each image to let the sense cool down a bit. We're framed, focused, guiding, so all we need to do now is click start and we are imaging.